So the shell and the command modules are both modules that allow you to run a command on a system just like you were logged into the shell on the system. There are some differences though, and I'd like to demonstrate the differences with a playbook here. What I'll do is I'll create two new tasks. I'm going to say run command with shell, and I'm going to create another task called run command with command. And what we'll do is use the shell module to run a command. And what I'd like to run is echo hello shell, and I'd like to redirect that output into a file and I'll pipe it into temp shell output. And what I'll do is I'll copy that and I'll paste it down here. And what we'll do is we'll replace this shell with command. So we've got shell and command modules running the same command essentially. And I'd like to see the difference between the two. Let's run this playbook against both of our hosts and see what the results are. What I expect to happen is that we have a temp shell output file and a temp command output file. That's succeeded against both of our hosts. Let's run over and check if it's worked. I'll do ls temp. And as you can see, we only have a shell output file here. If I cut the output of this, we'll see what's inside. It has hello shell, which is what we expect, but the command output isn't there. Let's check on Ubuntu as well, just in case it's something system specific. And no, we only have the shell output again. Let me cut the output just to make sure it's as we expect. And yes, we have hello shell in there, which is what we expect. So why isn't the command module working? What I'll do is I'll use uh, debugging to work out what's going on. What I'll do is I'll register a variable here and I'll call the, the variable shell output. And I'll do the same down here with the command output too. So we're registering those two variables. And what I'd like to do is use the debug module to print out the results of both of those. So I'll name the tasks just so we have something a little bit more clear. And I'll say debug shell output. And what I'll do is we'll use the debug task, debug module to print the variable and the variable will be shell output. I'll copy this and we'll do the same for the command module. Okay, and what we'll do is we'll just go through, we'll change that to command. I'll run that playbook again and using the debug module, we'll try and work out why this command module isn't working up here. So if we scroll up, what we can see here for our debug shell output task, we have our command here, that all looks fine. And as expected, we have no standard error and no standard out, which is what we'd expect if we were using the echo module and redirecting the output into a file. Let's scroll down to our command module output. So the command is represented slightly differently, but I don't see anything particularly wrong with that command. But what stands out to me down here is the standard out. What I can see here is that it's printing lines to standard out just like if we pass this entire string to echo but we weren't actually redirecting it into a file. And that demonstrates the major difference between the command and the shell modules. The command module will escape this whole entire thing and treat it like a string that's passed to echo, rather than actually using this like a shell command operator. So what that means is by default, I would recommend using the command module because it escapes everything. There's very low chance of something like command injection happening and it's going to be safer and more predictable by default. If you absolutely need to use one of these shell operators like the redirect, a pipe, and or some other conditional operator, what I recommend is switching to shell. So that's the major differences. Let's move on and see some shell specific functionality. In this section, I'll go over the use of arguments, environment, and loops with the shell module. Since I know I'm going to be using all these aspects, what I'll do is I'll flesh all that out. I know we'll be using arguments, I know that I'll be setting some environment, and I know that I'll be using a loop. In this task, I'd like to create two test files. So I'll create test file one and test file two. Now let's flesh out the shell command that we'll be using. I'm going to use echo, and I'll echo hello world, and I'll use the shell redirect operator, which we couldn't use in command, but we can use with shell. And I'll redirect this into a target environment variable. What I'd also like to do for this shell command is ensure that it runs in a different directory. So by default, it's going to be run in the home directory of our Ansible user, but I'd like to run it inside the temp directory. To do that, I'm going to set the chdir argument, and that's going to change the directory in which the command is run. I'll set that to temp. And finally, in the environment, I'd like to set the target environment variable. And what I'll do is I'll set that to item, which is going to be each item in the list as we loop through it. Let's run this playbook against both of our hosts and see the result. What I expect to happen is that two test files are created inside our temp directory by running this loop. That's succeeded against both of our hosts. Let's jump over to CentOS and take a look what happened. I'll do ls temp, 
And we can see here that yes, we have both of our test files in there. Let's cut the output of those and just make sure that it is what we expect. Test file one has hello world and test file two also has hello world. So that's how you use the arguments, environment and loop keywords with the shell module. One thing you really need to be aware of when you're using the shell module with variables is something called shell injection. To demonstrate what this is, I've created a task down here that uses the shell module to echo a message variable and redirect the output into TMP test file. Initially, I've set the message variable to hello world. Let's run this playbook against both of our hosts. And what I expect to happen is, is that this hello world string ends up inside a TMP test file. That's finished running. Let's jump over to CentOS and run ls temp. We have a single test file, which is what we expect. And if we cut the output of TMP test file, we have our hello world string. Everything's working as we expect. What if I change this message variable into something a little bit more sinister? I'll change this to hacked greater than TMP hacked and echo hacked. Let's run this playbook again and see what happens. From a security perspective, I'd like that this variable is treated like a string and ends up in our single test file. It's finished running. We'll go back over and run ls temp again. This time we have two files. This is not good. And if we cat the output, we can see what happened. I'll cat tmp hacked. We can see that we have a hacked string in there. And if I cat the output of tmp test file, we also have hacked inside there. And this demonstrates what shell injection actually is. What shell has done is it's interpreted this as a single command. We've replaced the variable with this string and shell has interpreted this as echo hacked into tmp hacked and echo hacked into tmp test file. This is a security issue and it's not something that's going to happen with the command module because the command module escapes everything by default. The way to overcome this is by using a quote filter inside our Jinja2 syntax. What I'll do first to demonstrate that this is actually fixing our problem is to run back over and remove those TMP test files. Let's run this playbook again, running the message through the quote filter and see what happens. What I'd like to see happen is that this entire string ends up in our test file. That's finished running. We'll go back over and run lstmp again, and we're back to our happy state, which is a single test file. And if we cut the output of test file, we have our full string in there. All of these extra little characters haven't been interpreted as part of the command. They've been interpreted as a string, which is what we want, especially if we're setting this message from some external source. So that's how you overcome shell injection with the shell module.